Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Today. Brad, we can't stop snapping. Amazing episode for you guys as we are capping off the season of X-Men versus Avengers. Who won? You decide. We had War Machine uh, to be able to recap with our thoughts here. And then we're going to roll into what we are looking at for next season. Me and Brad's top picks. And then the data mine, juicy, juicy data mine for what is to come after that. So this is our mega roadmap. As we recap the season, Brad, what were what did you think was the biggest winners and losers out of the the season release here? So this season we started with Hope Summers yep. as the season pass card. We had maybe the best card in the game. Yeah, um, I <laughs> she still, was definitely the winner. I still think she should be once per turn. Yes, um, same. So yeah, I think she was easily the winner. If we go off of not the season pass card and exclude her, I would probably say it's kind of even across the board. Like they all have like their yeah. pros and cons. Like Pixie, I still think was the worst one were, uh, uh, in the entire month, the most Ooh, fun one. And like the most enjoyable one. And one that I think people have, you know, the, the most fun playing, right. Yep. Because she's that kind of deck, but by proxy being that kind of deck, you're going to be a bad deck. Sorry. Um, yeah. And I still stand by that. The non Pixie version of high Evo is still the better version of Haivo, uh, which we'll talk about that more in a bit as well. And then, of course, uh, you know, what's his name? Uh, Cannonball is good. Mockingbird is very good. Probably the best card yeah. of the month outside of Hope. Yeah. Cause some rumblings of do we do some different things for Thanos or whatever? I saw, right. okay, Teddy, I saw an exa- a, a, a suggestion on Twitter that someone someone uh, replied to me with because someone said that they should change uh, Mockingbird or whatever. And I was like, and I retweeted, and I just said, just make the stone star in your deck. I don't care. I don't care about Pixie. Sure, yeah. yeah. Um, someone said that they care about Loki as in the opponent getting stones from you. Um, and I was like, I don't think Why? I care about that either. No, no, no. If Loki hits stones, I don't think they're very happy. Right. I think that's like the worst thing ever for Loki players. It's, like you it just depends. Get... Like it's if you played Loki on tempo on four. And you got stones, you're okay. But well, Loki's board space is so premium. Like, that might still be bad, yeah. That that and sometimes, because I know we've both played a decent amount of Loki, you're looking at, like, your matchup of what your opponent's doing. You're looking at your hand, you're like, I have my power cards. I have my gig- or my uh, my my devil dino in hand, right? Yeah. I have my... my uh, Trade those for stones. Right. And like, Marvel. It, nothing feels worse when you take the gamble of, like, I think I want to do what my opponent's doing. And see if I can beat them there, and then you you get the the low roll of their deck when you had yeah. a high oh, roll of your own deck. Yeah, yeah. When you're playing against the combo deck and you get the low roll of like pieces that did not combo, that is always just brutal. Whether it's destroy or discard, especially discard right now, which is being so popular, um, which I think is really interesting how much discard has stayed around even though it didn't get new toys explicitly this season oh it's kind of the lag from last season but it's doing really really well we'll get the discard in a second um, even through the nerfs of the i, I blanked because I was, I was starting to say what this person was suggesting they yeah. said that they should change mockingbird's text to uh costing one less for you know cards that uh destroy your opponent didn't start your deck but add the caveat of that you haven't drawn So, oh, okay. So if I draw the stone, it doesn't count. Yeah. So and like, then, if, but if, it, the card if I, that I generated, I, um, correct. What if it was just like cards that are generated starting turn one? Because the Thanos te- technically happens prior to turn one. Prior. Yeah. You or could they put could, some kind of. You know what they could do easily? They could yeah. just pull a Loki collector thing and just not change the text on either card. Really. Right. They change the text for Loki to transform. I guess. But, but the, yeah, the core game just, mechanic now excludes this. They could just say in an OTA, hey, Mockingbird says this. We yeah. understand for new players it might be a teeny bit confusing, but she no longer works with Thanos' and Stones. Right. Period. And they of could just do that without even a text change. Exactly. exactly. Keep exactly. the card elegant. Um, and so, that, we've talked about inelegance before. And I don't think that's the most inelegant thing, honestly. No. It's just kind of I mean, like. Well, People are used to it from any kind of even physical card games where they errata cards and like the card text is always the God. same, but you have to read the PDF of like this is what it actually does in these specific. Yu Gi Oh is awful about that. Magic almost never errata stuff because the problem that Yu Gi Oh has where you play like Goyo Guardian and Yu Gi Oh, 
yeah. where you used to be, it was a very strong synchro card and it basically could just like imagine Stegron, but as a Yu-Gi-Oh card, it was very right. good in a sense. And they changed it to requiring a earth tuner and an earth monster to, uh, to tree for it where it was yep. generic before. And people were trying to bring it out because they have old copies of it. And you're like, can't do that. They're like, right. but why? My card says this. Yep. And they're, well, let me pull it up on my phone. They there's a new said, version. This is, this is a new version. Exactly. Keyforge was bad that way too. So yeah, I could see some alterations there. Looking at War Machine, I think War Machine is landing actually in a pretty sweet spot here. I'm very happy yeah. with him. I think he was overhyped. He absolutely <laughs> is it, was. Is it safe to say that? He was heralded as like this bringer of absolute destruction with the infinite combo once that was allowed, which... Now that he's in my hands, at first I was like, oh, he should not work that way with Infinite, but now I'm like totally fine with it. I'm, no, I'm pretty I, happy I, with I was never against it lands. from a a um, a gameplay perspective, like yeah. balancing. I'm still against it from a functionality perspective and a game mechanic perspective. I still find it to be clunky and right. and uh, not really great for the game in general. Well, it's, not, it's not cleanly defined as like, Correct. what does his text mean? Like, there's people who are, like, asking, does he not care about energy costs? Because if he doesn't care about these play restrictions from hand, like, okay, but nothing but, stops let's, you. Let's, 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 let's be real, Teddy. Those people are kind of stupid <laughs> that are making that question. I'm not going to pull punches there. If you're a listener that had that question, it's okay. You had a stupid moment. We all have stupid moments. Be real. Within the yeah. realm of reality, come on. They're not gonna. That's like when people said the same thing with Jeff. Nothing can stop Jeff from being played. Right? Can I just play him for free? No. No. He you still has all a your cost. energy, but can't they play him? <laughs> right. No. Anyway, so here are the top lists. Here's the top four. Uh, Black Knight, Black Knight, Black Knight, War Machine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is the only. This one right here to the right. This Kitty Pride mishmash of stuff is the only one that I find to be truly unique, in the sense of like we're trying to make War Machine the card. So you have Ebony Maw, of course, and I love Crossbones in this. I tried Crossbones as well. Um, and you have Cole Obsidian. You still yeah. have three one drops, which I think is the exact perfect number for Cole Obsidian. So you sure. still have a very good chance of hitting him. But War Machine lets you just say, oh, you can play him wherever you want. And then, of course, Infinite. I, I like this. It's not doing too hot. I think maybe the Kitty Pride Angela stuff in Nightcrawler might be unnecessary and i think but i think the idea of like you know crossbones uh ebony maw infinite and war machine i like those it's just yeah i don't think you need to build around it in the sense of like we need to make I, this work quite frankly i don't like the crossbones or the cull obsidian that much here i like the infinite ebony maw war machine package and i keep it a little bit more lean with that just as my focus in my decks, I do have a lockdown more centric deck that I, mm -hmm. I really like for him. Bringing in the storm, I feel like gives Ox excellent utility off yep. the war machine. And especially if there's any location that's going to be closing down just naturally for you, those are your capitalize on games. The Black Knight decks are interesting. They're also not doing that hot, but they give you another way to like utilize the infinite. The other deck that I actually had good success with was leveraging Goose to restrict people. Yep. And then it was just like Hope and Wave to be able to cheat Blob or through like Hope into War Machine, cheat Infinite early, and then Taskmaster. So, <laughs> And that was pretty good. I had Kyera to back me yep. up on that vulnerable big boy. And uh, it, it came out as a good cube stealer. My win rate, not impressive. My cube gain, very good. So could be that I just hit some favorable matchups, but I love that one. My, uh, as you can see from a lot of these, uh, these decks, uh, this one, I try to Shuri, a Shuri thing, not great. Nah, Six and eight less than cubes. But again, keep in mind, as far as cubes go, uh, I'm staying in games I shouldn't be staying in. I'll be on stream telling like my, my I mean, chat, Mike, hey, I'm yeah. post infinite. You should, you don't have to defend here. yourself, Brad. We know you're a good player. You could just say the deck is not great. <laughs> uh, I, like, are you going to go mean, back to this one? Do you think I, there's even think, worth, yeah. do you think it's even worth like improving this deck? I think there's something here. What do, is there? I be it's a it's a solid Shuri deck that has the ability to pivot into just playing the infinite and it's fine. And then okay. you can still you can still do your Shuri float sunspot, go she hulk taskmaster stuff. Um 
you can still go like ah, I, I, those were the days do you remember you, when the, playing that float she hulk taskmaster was like unstoppable power right. now blob just like <laughs> i know you um I've I've honestly even played Sherry on four and War Machine on on five on top of her and it's been yeah. fine. Um, like Especially this, if you had hope prior to that, right? Right. Hope Sherry War Machine. Like this is this is fine. This is something interesting. The evolutionat idea is also interesting. Um, I don't the evolutionat. Know... I'm pretty high on actually. I saw I put Pixie in mine, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it goes hard. I I almost. I think I want Nebula back in. I, I, yeah. I miss having all three, but then I found Magic to be very good alongside Hope Summers in this particular build with War Machine. Um, gotcha. I don't know. It, it's a, it's such a strange like you have to figure out. And then like, do you cut armor? Um, I think Shocker can be cut in this one, but like armor oh, yeah, feels yeah. like one you need. But like, do you just do cut both of these, bring in Kyera, and then do like? like just nebula and then call it a day but then no, you it's have... in it cut magic run emo like that's your move you have yeah. so many scaling factors that, that ebony that maw too. is almost not a detriment for evolutionary if you don't find war machine so right that's my move or if you want to go crazy put the pixie in there which has been a high evolutionary like in and out so well but i definitely is, go emo this is where i was looking at it like i spent a whole day trying full build arounds with war yeah. machine and I was like, I'm not really feeling it. And then I woke up in the middle of the night, genuinely. Like I straight <laughs> up woke up from 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 sleeping, and I had this thought of like, uh, because that's what happens when you play Snap all day and you stream it all day. You fall asleep yeah. and you just dream about Snap. It's awful. No, it it's, does. I, yeah. I would not wish that. I, I I have this with other games too. Do you have that, mm-hmm. Teddy? Where you play a game a lot and like you start finding your subconscious. Like I'll be driving when yeah. I was playing a lot of Smite. And all of a sudden, my brain just kind of goes on autopilot, and I start thinking of like, I need a gank, need a gank, and I'm like, yep. why did I think that? It's why like, did I? It's like is... playing a match, but it's with it's like against itself, and so like the rules aren't quite right, right? And you're like, it's just you're caught in this mush, and it's exhausting. So anyway, I, I was disturbed in my slumber by Marvel Snap, and woke up, and I was like, what if? Because we have this the sentry package, right? Yeah, oh, we no. we have Sentry, Annihilus, and um, Hood as a package. And yeah. we've talked about this plenty of times on the cast. That as a package is better than a build around of those cards. Right. It's just it's just how it is. So like, what if we did the same thing but Ebony Maw, War Machine, and Infinite? Played a few games with this because I'm like, of course I'm going to put in a Dark Hawk shell. That's what that makes the most sense of like plan A versus plan B. Well, I mean, unless you wanted to put it in an Annihilus shell, like that's your other option. Y- you could, I-, I felt it was a little conflicting. Um, yeah, I yeah. guess you could do the storm thing still and like reaccess storm and stuff, but it was yeah, whatever. storm junk deck with war machine might have something, but I don't know if the storm I- I really try. benefits it. But we tried this. I like how it ended up like, I, I didn't do this on purpose, but it ended up having a two of each cost. And if it's nice and clean, um, yeah. As you can see, we did pretty good. 17 to 9, uh, plus 21 cubes, 65% win rate. We I immediately swapped out after like three games, Infinite for Giganto. Because I think in a generic list like this, that, that's not Black uh, Black Knight or like something that's playing Dracula or a way to otherwise use the Infinite, like uh, Evolution, for example. Right? Yeah. Giganto felt better. And very often, I would just go turn one Korg, or turn one even Ebony Maw in the right lane and then play Medusa, whatever, you know, Rock Slide. And then at four, I just play War Machine and then just slam the Darkhawk behind the Ebony Maw and be like, okay, I've been playing to the middle and to the right, throw Giganto left. And it's been perfectly fine. Now, of Because course, you yes. want to make sure that you're getting the Ms. Marvel buff on that Ebony Maw lane. So as long as you get something yeah. there at some point, you're pretty happy. I love the Legion inclusion here. I feel like any kind of location manipulation that started to get cut from a lot of the meta lists and a lot of people are getting arrogant and running magic. And so when you have Legion, like that's amazing. Any kind of location manipulation. Twice. Twice I had this happen where I played on five War Machine, right? Yep. And my opponent in two separate games has happened where they played on five with my War Machine. They played magic. And I'm sitting there staring at Legion, Ebony Maw in my hand. And I'm like, this is beautiful. This is art. 
and being yep. able to just play Crush. a one seven and a five seven and just take away limbo oh my god that's so good that's All right, so Brad, good is there any way we can get triple m in here because that's the other one that right now feels so important right uh, uh it's hard it's hard it's like medusa almost but a yeah. tempo for Eliath is key i don't know it you could cut i feel like it's you'd have to change two things i think okay. you would cut medusa and Eliath, take away uh, some of that tempo idea sure. and then just bring in mm and then something else maybe you could just, I, I don't i don't think you want zabu because you're only running two fours um, is that crossbones or cull then it could be it moves things the I pricing around a little bit but i don't know i'd i'd prefer oh it could just be black widow right it could um i had black widow in there when i was building it but then i cut it for just the t- the two um i think you go a few ways with it i i don't know even like kitty as long as you have hope kitty is like almost viable anyway so right but then I feel okay. really bad for not including Elsa with Kitty. Well, yeah. So we now, cut something now, else. Now we're just doing a different deck. Now, right. you Which you is... could you could do a Kitty bounce style with Hope Summers, like just another little package. So instead of the Darkhawk package, you have Elsa, Angela, Kitty as your package instead of your core yeah. Darkhawk Rock Slide. And then you right. can include MMM there. Um, you can do... Uh, you can still keep Medusa and the Eliath and stuff because honestly... Being able to play Kitty in a six drop, Kitty in a six drop is so powerful. Is that um, the thing is that Kitty works as like anti initiative? I don't know. You still have to be fast as a deck. That one's that one's a dance if you want to run a life and the Kitty bounce trick. But oh, and yeah. uh, this one we we didn't do great. I only played six games. It's fun though. It's fun. Okay, I, I like it. I like the <laughs> idea of it. Um, two of the games I lost was because I just straight up math wrong it was my fault they were winnable games i just did the math wrong um but yeah i i like this one a lot if you guys are just listening it is all of the guardians the meaning thor beta ray wasp but no lockjaw instead you use elsa as a power punch and you want to keep all your cheap stuff on the board it was fun and then I, I tried this back to formula list where I was like, what if we just took the old series one and two control list and oh said, let's run it back. And I played Ice Sunspot, Man Scorpion. Ice Don't Man you have something Scorpion. better to do with your life? Yep. <laughs> Iceman Scorpion Sunspot Was that the one where you got called a bootlicker? That was, no, or that was a different story. Oh, no, that was a different one. But that's okay, so okay. funny. Oh, I forgot about getting called a bootlicker. <laughs> I, I got called a corporate shill and a bootlicker. Corporate shill and a bootlicker. That was great. And, the, and doing, that, that has nothing better to do with your life than play Iceman Scorpion. Yeah, that, so. no, this one, that's the one where I read someone saying, uh, I got a subreddit from Marvel Snap. Yeah, where they're like, anytime I see someone play that, I audibly go out, "Oh, yeah. get a life!" Yeah, and that's yeah, yeah, so life, good. Yeah, no, sunspot. my life is this. My sleep is this. Listen, guys, <laughs> we are we're in it. Uh, so yeah, Sunspot, Iceman, Scorpion, Armor, Lizard, Mister Fantastic, Shang Chi, Enchantress, Gamora, Spider Woman, Leader, Doctor Doom. I'm not gonna lie to you. We went two and two, and I only played four games. I didn't have yeah. I didn't had zero patience today. But yeah. I, the Iceman Scorpion. Okay, the, I'm going to tell you this. Game one, Teddy. Yep. First made it, launched it, and I was like, the RNG gods of Snap are smiling upon me because they respect what I'm doing, and they gave yeah. me first location camouflage Iceman Scorpion oh. right off the rip, and I was like, oh, Snap, is, Snap twice. This is so good. Oh, it's amazing. Yep. Um, so that felt great. And then you follow up with Dr. Doom. Yeah, you're an unrevealed deck. You might want to play Wong if you want to get a little more greedy. Like, yeah. Straight up cut Fantastic or Gamora for Wong. Pop off. I mean, I, I just cut one of your interaction cards, shang and Enchantress. Nah, too. But. That's a, okay. Before we pivot um, into the future cards, who is better right now, Chi Enchantress? It's got to be Chi, right? It's still Chi? Yeah, uh, I mean, let's look at the let's look at the, the list right now. So if I, I feel like Enchantress utility is going way up. So right Enchantress now. can hit Null, but so can Shang Chi more often than not. The Null is like the destroy is a dance, right? 
I think that the Shang is like better against the Venom because then you take away the Zola. That's generally how True. I play it. But yeah, Shang better in the destroy matchup. Uh, nothing in discard. Discard is like it, you want Enchantress for the Morbius. Right. But even then, like the power up that they can have in the other lanes with your Dracula and like Modoc and stuff. Yeah, it's still it's good, but Shang's doing impressive. nothing. Exactly. And Enchantress Shang, is Shang. doing like pretty good work. Uh, Thanos, you can enchant his uh, Mobius and stuff, but Shang can take care of like the other stuff. So you know, both of them are nice. This is that Mockingbird makes it so frustrating because before you could Shang call. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. If you could, uh, if you just make her a six ten, I think that's a that's a solid adjustment. Yep. Uh, all the the Guardian seeing play now is awesome, by the way. Um, but she she uh, Shang only hits. Gam. One of them. <laughs> gamma, gamma. Uh, so there's And that. Loki, like modern Loki is pretty invulnerable to it as well because they ro- don't run Devil Dino anymore. Correct. So it's So like maybe they should. Phoenix Force and pretty invulnerable to it. Um, these are all the, these are the stuff that you see at the very top of the ladder where I play. Uh, Black Knight, so. it's probably too late for Shang. Yeah, Black Knight's going to be too late and then the Tribunal, you actually want Enchantress and... Yep. Patriot, you want Enchantress, and then Mister Negative, which I'm seeing more and more of. You want Enchantress. So uh, I don't, don't, I don't know if you know any um, truth to this, but someone in my chat said that someone asked a question on the Discord about uh, Tribunal, oh, yeah. and the response was that they were considering uh, changing Tribunal to ten. Basically, the question was like, are they considering mm. this? Yeah, does Tribunal enter that phase of like, do you pump him up to a ten so he can be Shang Chiable? And I guess they said they're thinking about it. I... Do, do you think he needs it? Yes and no. On the one hand, I don't like them leaning into balancing around people, including Shang as their only control card. Right. Like, I like that there's multiple deck types that then foster this diversity to make us think, is it Enchantress this season or is it Shang? Like, I, I prefer thinking about that rather than thinking they need to make it so that my Shang always works. Because I would prefer not to always have to run Shang in every deck for the rest of time. Well, lucky for you, we got a card coming out next month. Oh, hit me with it. can easily be an auto-include alongside Shang to help let's stop Tribunal. Go, but I guess first we have to touch on the season header, Baron Zemo. Yeah, so Baron We're going to rapid fire. We've already touched on these cards. Some of them have seen changes. So we're going to do kind of priority list for next season. And then we're going to touch on the data mines uh, that are still subject to change, but farther off on the horizon. Right. So Baron Zemo. Zemo. 3-5. On reveal, recruit the lowest cost card from your opponent's deck to your side of this location. Recruit is a new keyword, uh, but it means, as far as we understand, add to. um, Just not using that specific verbiage. It's not going to trigger the... It's not like you're playing the card, but it will still trigger its on reveal and effects and whatnot. Yeah, so it's kind of like um, Gladiator pulling it out, but to your side. Yeah, so this gets really interesting, I feel like, as you look at some of the force multipliers that we've gotten. You have Yandu, who's going to destroy their cheapest card. So then you're hoping to cultivate a better pull for the Baron. And then if you do it multiple times through on reveal multiplication, you could get some really good stuff out of their deck and actually mill them. Like if we're looking at Absorbing Man and Grandmaster in this kind of deck, the opponent by the final turn might not have anything left in there and you got it all. Like you're pulling five, six costs. Well, let's, let's think about this curve, right? You go turn one, Yandu, turn yep. two, Cable, turn three, Baron yep. Zemo, turn exactly. four, Absorbing Man, turn five, Grandmaster. You can do, do, do Grandmaster. You've just played. Plus... Will they have a card left at that point actually? Because you destroy, they might have one. You count, well, yeah. Will you take the last card at that so point? They, so t- turn one, they have they had drew four. They have eight cards in their deck. Turn yep. one, right? Then you so cut them down seven, to six because you destroyed and they six. drew. Then you cut them down to four because you drew with cable and they drew, and then you go Baron, which takes them to two, and you go Absman, which takes them to zero. <laughs> They're uh, out right. by turn four. You milled them. Perfect. Mill is here for the first time in snap it's never been viable before this this now, is viable it, it might not be viable we'll see uh but stealing oh, yeah yeah, is yeah. It is, but it 
So yeah, not that the, the deck will be necessarily competitive if you go all in on that. It sounds good. It sounds like it could be, just theory crafting wise. Um, but it means that you mill them at a soon enough point in the game for it to really hurt them, is what I'm saying in terms of it being viable. Right. No, I'm excited. And this finally gives substance to that change that everyone hated for Yondu. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited to try it next week. Uh, but um, you you could even like off curve it to be double Yandu with Grandmaster, and you've taken the their cheapest two out, and then you're pulling gold yeah. with Baron Abs, man. Yeah, as simple as turn one that, turn two Grand like Grandmaster is weird because like I like him, <laughs> but then I don't ever want to put him in my deck. Right? No, yeah, yeah. It's so the, you, it's the but, two zero. Do you think he should be a two one? Do you think I would love okay? him to have a little bit more stat line, but of course it gets dangerous with stuff like this. That's an effect that genuinely gets multiplicatively more more powerful the more times it activates. Right? right. Like just playing Baron for a three five that's giving you something else. Well, one, I think he's overstatted. Like, this is a Loki stat line kind of thing. Like, you're he, happy he just for the overstated. stats, and then he gives you something. But this effect happening multiple times a game gets way better later on in the game, just like doubling. Um, but it's because the opponent's cards are getting more expensive, and also because you pull multiple of their cards, you might even activate synergies between their cards because you've pulled so many. <laughs> and in all fairness, I also think he's overstatted, but so is Corvus. So yeah. is... Um... Hope. Uh, I think Hope's overstated. I think uh, Black Swan's overstated. Eh, Black Swan's a... She's a 3-5 that makes her yep. one zero the next turn. She's overstated. And she's nowhere. Like yeah, because... That deck needs a flagship like her. So Right. I- I'm okay with her. I would like to see her go back and then some of the other like facilitators it, around is, her maybe come up. She, but like... Is she not being played enough as a result of her being bad? Or is it the symptom of one cost in zoo style decks just really hard to work because Killmonger exists. It could be, yeah, that the counterplay is just much more fleshed out for that deck. Um, and the counterplay to losing all your cards is not fleshed out. You were in trouble, my friends. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Well, uh, you want to have something. You It might be something that you actually like start looking at, you know, that Mirage, that uh, Agent 13, just something that you know is going to fill out your hand with something to do. Right. Um, if you're going to be losing all of this out of your deck. All right. So that's Baron Zemo. I'm so we love him, Gold Star, but also you yeah. know he's the battle pass. So he's the he's the primo card. Next and... up, this guy's making a huge splash. Red Hulk. People are very scared of this card, Brad. Six eleven. When your opponent ends the turn with unspent energy plus four power, if in hand or in play. So this is the evolved Hulk's ability, but turned up doubled. On activated on the opponents. I love the Thunderbolts like mirrored symmetry of other cards. Yeah, so I I'm a little perplexed by the so for those who don't know, all these cards Baron Zemo, Red Hulk, US Agent, not Red Guardian, but and I guess not White Widow, and Valentina. So one, two, three, four out of the six cards this month all got a little bit of a secret OTA yesterday where yeah. they got bumped up by one power each. Now, the Red Guardian got like a rework from his initial data mine and a, White a Widow White Widow did, but really it was in the effect on her White Widow's Bite. But I kind of, like Baron Zemo, I kind of get it to the season pass card and they just like three fives now for some reason. They, they want the new cards to land in a way that they're like making a splash in the meta. That way they get enough data to be able to tune them from yep. there, right? US Agent, I also understand. I don't understand Red Hulk because its effect is that it gains plus four each time. So does the plus one on its base... <laughs> really yeah. make it that much better and on top of I mean, that it's teddy, like teddy it's it goes from being a nice clean 10 14 yep. 18 22 right. yep. and it's a gross 11 15 19 23 that's disgusting he's always supposed to be gross have you seen this card art yeah this was be like ah oh, what the heck is this guy it's gonna be how how often do you float in energy in your games um i think it happens more often than we realize so like let's look at like the top list for example um Destroy very often will stumble once or twice throughout its game, right? 
because oh yeah yeah you have your threes um like sometimes you don't have deadpool and you just like you might just need to go like venom on four and you have nothing else to play because you've already played your nico x23 but you don't have deadpool or because of the x23 giving you extra energy you are able to climb up a little bit to play something else but it's still leaving over one extra same thing goes for corvus glaive over here with discard right yep. these ultra synergistic decks the more i play them the more i realize you float quite a bit thanos same thing Even with hope right hope as Decks well hope especially in thanos because oftentimes you'll be able to weave a stone or two in right and let's say it's turn four and i'm like cool i can weave in this jeff and like a stone but I don't have anything else to play at the moment. I didn't draw any stones. I just have big stuff and I'm going to play them yep. onto hope. So I have a big turn next turn to play, to play a six uh, right. and hopefully plus a stone or something. Um, and, or maybe they take, you take the gamble on the Psylocke on two, like hope I get something. And then you've like the floating happens a lot is my point in every deck. Do you think it's three turns or do you think it's two? What? Like the average? Yeah, what do you think the average of this Red Hulk is really going to be? Because so often people will float in the early turns, but also you're not always going to have Red Hulk drawn until the mid game. If we take like, try and find an average line for this guy, I draw him on turn three. Is he going to be a 119 or sorry, a 619 kind of power line? I Has could see it. I, I, I think if you have him, like, let's say, let's say high roll, you have him opening hand. Yeah, then he's going to be big. Yeah, but I, I think the Almost average, guaranteed big. The average is he's going to probably be two hits on average. Okay, the so you later, think average is two hits, not one? Because, I mean, drawing him later in the game... I think, he's, like I think you one. can pretty much get one but later in the game. But even a 6-15, that's better than Giganto, and it can be played anywhere. And remember... And that's Blob. 6-15 if, is Blob. And that and that we're, we're only thinking about, like... Um, like okay, another thing, if he you draw him one hit to ex- exactly. be stellar, and if you draw him on six, he's your top deck. There's still a chance that they don't play six energy sure. worth yeah, of yeah. stuff. He has and especially, chance, yeah. especially with things like Hope, Corvus, and stuff like that, where they have seven or eight energy left over, and it's like they're not spending all of that. Yeah, right. They might go like a one drop, a six drop. Yep. I, uh, yeah, I think I think there's a very good chance you get like one hit. At least. Does, does Thanos run this now instead of Blob? <laughs> I didn't just so, get a I better mean, Blob he, tool. He's going to be a death knell straight up to Haivo. So I think in metas in which Haivo is a bit more prevalent, but like truly, can you tell me a reason you cut Blob? And, like, Don't you cut Magneto here for Red Hulk and not Blob? Uh, maybe, maybe. Because, because it Magneto, depends on how much you like Magneto's, that disruption. Magneto's 12 in deck. He's going to be 11 I in deck. I personally will still run Magneto to annoy Brad yeah, Super. Stop, so. stop running him. Stop running him, everyone. Listen, yeah. listen. If you're going to play Thanos, I want you the, to play Red Hulk. The Red Hulk Thanos. There we go. Yes, yes. Everybody nodders. Nodders, guys. We got it. We're all going to play Red Hulk Thanos. Okay. All right. <laughs> U.S. Agent. Ongoing. Four, five, and six cost cards here have minus three power. So this is the little guy taking on the big guys, the opposite of man thing. The big guy lording over the little guys. I mean, great, right? Because you can pop this down on the final turn. Now, obviously, it's rarer for the opponent to stack these higher cost cards together. Mm-hmm. And it's going to hurt <clears throat> your cards as well. But being cheap makes it much easier to play like on that final turn to kind of surprise people, right? Yeah, and I mean, so this was not the card I was thinking of when I was talking about being able to counter Tribunal, but now that I think about it, kind of can. Kind of counter, like Iron Man is brutalized when it can. Right. <laughs> Iron um, Man, Onslaught, <laughs> Tribunal, all taking minus three. Oh. And I, I really like this card. Um, I think it's probably inevitably going to be the weakest of the month, simply because... You know, look at Man Thing. I think Man Thing is a phenomenal card. I think Man Thing is a very powerful card. But the problem is, it's really hard to find. How did a we home. get six cards this month? This is crazy. That's it is crazy. Um, 
but like this this goes in the same deck as man thing let's let's be honest like you want to play these together that's awesome oh yeah that's the other thing is like you just play them together and as long as you're hitting loot cage like there's another little three card package you got um well it's four cards really because you got hazmat that plays pretty easy in there as well so uh that do you think there can be a new Haiva list that's just trying to do like the abomination thing and then this card, man thing, all that stuff, like Scorpion. Like, does this just make that version just a little bit better? It definitely makes it a little bit better. I don't know if it makes it better enough. Like that deck could just run Spider Woman kind of thing. Right, but Spider Woman's a five eight. But she's coming out at the time of game when U.S. Agent is debuffing anything because, like, they haven't played any four, five, or six in the early game. But for... he also lets he lets you fit in your other cards, right? So True. him being a two cost is great. So you can play him. You early. can play him on five alongside Luke. Right? Exactly. Yeah. You can play him on and then five you can still alongside Hazmat um, Abs Man together on the final turn. Right. You can if you have Hope Summers in the list, you can have Hope Summers down already, and then you can play him and. Uh, What's it called? Um, uh, what do you mean? This, what What is this? If you have Hope Summers, you have Hope Summers sure. in the deck. Sure. Um, or actually, yeah, you can like just get Cyclops to trigger still by so, getting extra energy. Uh, you can play him on six with Man Thing if you've already kind also, of guys, done stuff. Save your caches because you get um, Pegasus, Riding Mirage, and a beautiful Jeff in this in this one so i'm Important. actually more interested in this echo <laughs> mm. the uh, if it was a card that i ever played maybe i would be too i missed out on the really cool echo uh in that one spotlight when she first gotcha. came around so i kind of want to I, I love the shaw i love that shaw a lot actually i, I like that like it. i like the bust characters versus the full figure but i mean echo is also a bust so i don't know why i'm hating like it's a great art i just don't play the card yeah. Well, I mean, this this one feels more dynamic to me. This it echo is. by uh, by David. Mack. Yeah, but the Shaw, he's in a portrait. It's like a frame yeah, there. Like he, he looks like a dick. <laughs> he is. <laughs> it's lore accurate. Yeah. Uh, so I, right. yeah, good job. EOS agent looks cool. Um, Red Guardian. Red Guardian. This is the one that's really gonna dumpster uh, some living tribunal. All right. You were talking about. U.S. agent hitting Iron Man. Well, this yeah. absolutely hits Iron Man. 3-3 three, three, on reveal. Afflict the lowest power enemy card here with negative two power and remove its text. That is going to be great for Dracula. Great for Iron Man. Uh, great for just a lot of things like that turn one Quinjet that Loki got and they're about to go turn four Loki. Well, Zabu. Yes, yeah, Zabu as well. Um, there's just so much like that just gets hit um yeah being able to hit like an x23 so it's oh yeah the destroy pulling the pins out from destroy is going to be super fun this great you could get a you could get a morbius early on discard discard probably does fine but i think there's enough utility in general on this guy that like i mean heck even if he hits orange stone like you're pretty happy about hitting orange stone and debuffing orange stone and putting a three three down your side like, right that's that's okay and that's like worst case scenario i am so excited to play control again which by the way is a deck that is just gone from ladder for seemingly no good reason the sarah, sarah control S- sarah zabu i don't see it anymore he's a three he could be a surfer guys let's go everybody as Stop soon it. as a three Stop cost it. no 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 as soon as any three cost releases you have to talk about surfer okay you know what <laughs> I'll 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 humor you for a second. It would be like him versus Negasonic. I feel I like that's think, your choice. Do you like that? Do you like Red Guardian or do you like Negasonic? I would Teenage prefer Warhead Red Guardian because I think he has more application. I do. I actually would too. Um, and Surfer, you don't really have the the flexibility to fit in very many tech cards. And because this is you're a like, tech card. This is a good tech card. Yeah, you don't have much use. of a space to run that Shang or Enchantress. You might run Rogue, but that's like not really done right now. So. Yeah, I, we're. I think he's great. We, we didn't talk about him much, but we really like him. Up to uh, White Widow, two two on reveal. Add a Widow's Kiss to your opponent's side of this location, and the Widow's Kiss. Uh, do I have the text here? Yes, I do. It is a zero zero ongoing. This has minus four power. Disable this ability if your side of this location is full. <gasps> so you. They get 
Hold on, hold on. Is that added to hand or no? White Widow, instead of putting the bite to hand, it puts it across the board from her. So yep. junk junkers rejoice. This is a two two that immediately junks their side of the location. You love with it. At best, a zero zero. At worst, a zero minus four. So that's the thing. In like junk, you have this anti synergy of you're almost helping them fill the location. So it'll just be a zero zero. But that's still good for junk. And then the cases where they don't fill it, it's really detrimental. It's going to be great because they if they fill it and you just go cannonball. <laughs> right. That's no, great. No, cannonball and junk is good. And then like a cheap way to add junk is so important for that deck. So even just simple like Polaris and stuff, right? Um, oh yeah, yeah. This is this is gonna be great. Uh, now remember, Polaris will not pull the kiss because no. the kiss is zero, and Polaris doesn't does one, two, and three. But still, high synergy, very good. Uh, now I don't see the previous versions of the Widow's Kiss. It used to be something obscene. I forgot what it, it would was. debuff all the cards around it oh, by a yeah. certain amount. It was like a minus one or minus two. Yeah, and it was like, no way can I just spit this onto their side of the board and make it like d- absolutely terrible for them to live And keep there, in but... mind, uh, this is still a 2-2 as it stands. This is still yeah. bounceable. And you can it still... is bounceable, baby. Let's go. So we go with the little beast. We get them again. You got two of them all across the board. You, okay, Hope you, you don't okay. play against Destroy, but I mean, that's always one. a bad matchup for this deck. Turn. Turn two, Widow's yep. Bite, or White Widow, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn three, you Beast. Mm-hmm. Turn four, player again. Yep. Maybe Grandmaster? Maybe you Grandmaster as well. Maybe you Absorb Man <laughs> the next turn too. They just give them five bites. <laughs> Get some Wong action in there. Why not? The uh, Wong into this with two bites across is kind of disgusting. So yeah, I think she's going to be fun. Uh, I think she's going to be mid, but she's going to be fun. Um, I think uh, the, the deck is mid, but she's going to make it better. Yeah. What well, she'll inherently be mid because of the deck. Valentina though, not mid, not mid. Very two, good. Three on reveal at a random six cost card to your hand. Give it minus two cost and minus three power. Ooh. So Teddy, we paint you a picture. Okay. Yep. Yeah. You're playing Loki. I am. And you play turn one Quinjet. You play yep. her on turn two. You now have a three cost six drop. That's playable on tempo here with just minus three power. Oh, yep. no, no, and no. If it's something That's like... before they've even triple M'd. Yep. And... <laughs> you can triple M, obviously, to stop this power, but uh, it yeah, comes but the, out Here's fast. the great thing. The flexibility is so amazing. Like, Let's say you get a dud, right? You get, sure. a, you get a blob in a Loki list, and you're like, that's never going to that's never gonna be big enough, right? I'm I not... mean, it might be. It yeah. actually would fight through the minus three power, chewing Bob. up your deck. Yeah. yeah, you would. It would eat everything to get to yeah. fifteen. As long as you had other cards that made cards, I might play it. Okay. Well, like if I've got Colson, okay, I probably then, play Blob. All right, then let's say it's the Null. Okay, how about that? It's no. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the Null's a dud. Yeah. You can just be like, all right, I'll hold on to it, and then I'll loki it away anyway. Right. Right. Yeah, but yeah. let's think of the high roll. What if it's a destroyer? A three, a three thirteen destroyer. I don't even right. care about Valentina Quinja anymore. I'm taking no, the destroyer. You got the, you got the mega card, right? Like, you just, you're just happy. And Eliath is great because I don't care about a, a, a minus one. Eli- I've gotten hit by Celine plenty of times when Eliath is in my hand. I'll be Still fine. Playable. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll work it out. I'm excited for this month. This is gonna be great. Yeah, any six cost that's like leveraging strength off of a power rather than just a stat line is going to look great all right oh my goodness that is the season of six cards and remember guys the best card is yes hope summers who becomes series five uh buy her with tokens (laughs) what's your top pick out of i mean going back like hope summers is actually like if you haven't gotten hope summers and you're spending tokens on any of these you get hope summers right Probably, yeah. But well, who's your who's well, your next like pick? It. In this, uh, yep. it's Red Guardian. It is a genuine answer to cards we've haven't really had answers to before, yeah. such as like I said, Quinn. Like, look, you can Enchantress a lot of these ongoings, right? Like we're talking about like Zabu, Quinja, Iron Man. But by the time Enchantress comes out, except for maybe Iron Man, the damage is already done. 
this is a good three drop that can come down. Yeah, yeah. you can, I guess, Zabu too, but Enchantress has, you know, the downside of hitting your own stuff. Right. Um, and on top of that, the big thing is hitting just Dracula. Yeah, just Dracula. It's enough. Iron Man. Like, that's Anything so that a Phoenix Force deck is trying to set and, up around. And frankly, also hitting Mobius as well against this card, because by the time you play this, if you yeah. play this on curve on three and they played Mobius on two, you're kind especially if you have priority, by the way. If you have priority, you're guaranteeing hitting their Mobius. But even if yes. they discard, like they play Lady Sif, right? It's a two two Mobius. So it's good. Red they, Guardian is looking really good. Probably also my top pick. Now, for me personally, I think White Widow might be my top pick, but also interestingly enough, like one of the ones that I'd be the soonest to say you could skip right. if you're not interested in this deck. She plays in one deck. She plays in junk. If you don't care about junk, don't get her. But if you do care about junk, we're getting her. All right, team junk, we're, we're on the bandwagon. I would say that US Agent, probably also the easy skip um, if yeah. you're more budget focused. And I, that lets you hit um, him, Red Hulk, Red Guardian, valentina and a beautiful symmetry of having pass weeks in between all of them to accumulate your resources so that seems just if, like a really good cadence if this ends up being the order of which we get true they could rearrange right they could rearrange these also also these these spotlights as you can see next to all of them say not confirmed yeah. we're just going based off of like the dates of which we release these and like you can kind of tell and they're it's easy to figure out these are very likely to be true but we saw last month, uh, or I guess this month, where they swapped around the Miss Marvel with something else in a week. But they did it on a patch, and so people who hadn't gotten the patch could get the old order. Right. People who got the patch were stuck with the new order, and there was a whole bunch of confusion. Correct. So, yeah, this is this month looking great. But let's look ahead, Teddy, to the month. Even farther. After. Gaze going all into the, way the crystal to, ball. It's be May. My friends, don't blink. It's blink. Five seven on reveal. Swap the last card you played with a higher cost card from your can, deck. Can we just can we just talk about the glow up that was this original card for the longest? This is one of the oldest uh, data mine cards in the game. Yes. By the way, blink has been around forever. And look at the date, May of twenty twenty two. Just recently, boom, new card. Yeah two years going on two years and now we know she's no longer this you can move this each turn when it moves plus one power as a three one that was booty cheeks it needed to garbage be a or something awful but now uh and then then it was uh a three one saw it the last card you played uh, now she's a five seven um yes this is going to be very good because it's a yes. guarantee, because it says, swap the last card to play with a higher cost card from your deck. So I want you to imagine. I didn't find hella bread. Oh no, what am I going to do? Wait. Yeah. I got blink. Especially it, and on top of that, if you play turn four Jubilee, uh huh. guarantee you get a five cost from your deck. Right. You're thinning out like heck, man. Right? That's That's crazy. No oh, man, Jubilee didn't pull the infinite. Well, and try again. And Jubilee goes back to the deck, so there's a chance you top deck her, and then essentially and guarantee to like get another card. You'll see your entire deck pass through your hand as long as right you have board space, I guess. Um, I'm very excited for this. I don't know, besides like Tribunal, where else it really goes. There could be. I mean, like a big card scar deck you yeah, know it could be that's kind of a uh, i've seen some of the top players playing that a little bit blink could modify that deck and then improve it um now there will be awkward times though where you like you really want to play blink but you just played a coal obsidian the turn before right yeah yeah where you don't want to trade that cost you want a low power mid to high cost card to then trade for the best card from which makes her deck building a bit of a challenge because i like what yes. you're saying with like the you know big cards you know uh to try to to make uh scar work but like if you play right. big cards you want to play some of the big well cost cards at four so it, it could also be just like a pixie deck that's running something like wasp because i mean you could trade wasp for anything 
That's the thing is it doesn't say like just one cost higher or something. It's just a higher cost card. So Wasp could become the Infinite. Right. It's just a guaranteed higher it. cost. Yeah. And the later it goes, the more like you are to hit your big stuff. Well, the more like you are to know what you're pulling from. Yes. Does she it's go, one of, does she go with Thanos? <laughs> trade this stone for the better thing. Because you'll right. never hit another stone. You'll hit another big guy. Right. And yeah. if you've already played like your twos and threes and stuff, you're like, oh, Blob's coming, baby. Blob's coming. I mean, heck, even there's a world in Thanos where you like sack a cheap Mockingbird for another card, hoping to top deck Mockingbird again. You know, like it's she could play in Thanos pretty easy. All right, let's go on to the next one because <laughs> there's there's a lot of a lot of cool cards coming. Uh, Nocturne. So, Nocturne. Dude, I love this. Can I let me read this? Because I because first off, Nocturne is the daughter of Scarlet Witch and Nightcrawler. It's not from six one six, I believe. It's an alternate timeline. I forgot which yeah. Earth it is. But she's the she's the daughter of Scarlet Witch and Nightcrawler. She is a three five. Perfectly okay? thematic. She's perfectly absolutely perfectly th- thematic. She's a three five. Did you notice, guys? That means they added the card stats together. Yeah. Hey, I was about to ask you, Teddy. What's what's Scarlet Witch's stats? Yeah, two three. And what's Nightcrawler's? One two. Oh my God, that's a three five. And on top of that, you can move this once. What's that? Uh, it's it's Nightcrawler's ability. When this moves, replace <laughs> its location with a random new one. <gasps> oh my oh, God! Gosh. Okay, okay. Which one is getting replaced? The one she came from, or the one she goes to? The one she moves to. Okay. Uh, obviously, I think I feel like that's a given. I hope that's what it is. I, I feel like it's ambiguous. I feel like it has to be the one it moves to. Otherwise, it it doesn't make sense if it's the one it's moving from. The thing is that it doesn't say like old or new location with a random new one. Yeah, but like it, it says when this moves, comma. So yep. that happened. Sure. Now that that, is, that requirement has been met, replace its location. So it's based on the ordering and the comma in place tells me it's where it goes. Gotcha. The well, move the has thing. happened. Why doesn't it say it after this moves? Just in case you move it more than once. Interesting. But, but after this moves, it could still happen multiple times. Right. But after it's just this like move a, feels like a, I don't know. After this move sounds more elegant. If you, Want to it guarantee also sounds that more it. like one and done almost. I don't know. No, oh. I don't. I don't know. They might. They they're probably going to reword this. I'm sure. That would be nice. Or they just say, you know what, deal with it. <laughs> yeah, learn. I will. Yeah. Uh, here's another portrait for you this no, this I'm... week, Celine. You gonna get that one? Ah, uh, that Kyera looking juicy as well. Okay, yeah. maybe, maybe. We'll see. All right. Next. So, pretty happy with Nocturne, actually. Oh Just as like location God. manipulation. That's the amazing Living Tribunal. The ink pulp? Oh, my yep. God, I love ink pulp. All right, okay. Sage. Uh, she's a 4-1. Uh, on reveal, plus two power for each different power among all cards here. What a mouthful. What a yeah. convoluted card. Uh, what a brain teaser. I hate her. <laughs> okay, so guys, th- this is all other cards. So it's like the Ms. Marvel brain teaser, but it applies to your opponent as well for how much power she is going to get. It's on reveal, so it's not ongoing. So it doesn't scale as it goes. It just is a burst as soon as you play it. She does synergize with Renslayer. She does synergize with other on reveal synergies. White Widow. What do you... White Widow. White Widow would give it a... Di- yeah. Would be a two There's and a negative synergy, four. Baby. Okay. White Widow. White Widow into Sage. Into, into Black Widow. Yes. All they different feel, powers. They feel true. incentivized because they're already losing power in that lane. Yep. And they have to fill it anyway. Sacrifice to, it. To just put the Widow's Bite there. Right. right? That's the psychological yep. aspect. That could happen. Okay. Is this good? No. No. I don't think she's good. I think any card, <sighs> like you, so, okay, if you focus on just your own stuff, three different things, that's plus six, Right. So she is a four yeah. seven. That's good, but well, you have yeah. to. But you have to fill your lane by turn four, essentially. You you also you're like expecting to pick up something off the opponent here. 
to pick I, up to four nine. I, so four nine would be awesome. Let me think about this for a second, though. Like if they Let's play two cards her. and you play two cards, and then on turn four you flip Sage and you hit four nine, like that's great. Correct. My thinking is, I mean, if you just are there, are there any other cards that put stuff on the other side besides Viper? I mean, yeah, like a goblin. But that still doesn't... It's the, one card. It's it was just, like your play. One. Instead of being on your yeah. side, it's on their side. Uh, I, it is we, a unique... We need, we need more level. White Widow type of cards that Plays to create both. something to send over. Yeah. Because imagine... debris, the rocks don't count. The rocks just count as one. They're right, both the same one power. On, they're one on yours and one on theirs. Yeah. I wish there was a three cost... I almost wish now that the the change to Black Widow was not in hand, but just to their set a negative one to their side. Right. Oh, uh, no, but that'd be way too good. <laughs> what it be way too good. Yeah. Also, just, it just would a, break up the. One? She's nice that she blocks the draw. Like I don't know. I like Black right. Widow. Right. Yeah. She's so she's not a dark hawk card anymore. Cool. But she's a junk card now. Well, she's still she's both right now. Correct. <laughs> what what are we talking about? We're just talking about a bad card here in Sage. Like I don't. I, don't know. I think on average she's gonna be bad, but I think the games in which she's good is gonna be like a uh, a trick. Yeah. So, like, what do we define as good? Do we define as good being on tempo hitting four nine, or do we find as good being like on turn six? I'm trying to play this to a level of winning a lane. Like she's gonna solo carry a lane at a four twelve. No, sorry, four thirteen. Um. How is she in negative? She gets flipped into a 1-4 with the same on reveal. I mean, that's not bad. Negative right now is a pretty lean deck, though. They're just right. like run all the energy cheats possible and then Wong, Black Panther, Zola. I'm tired of negative right now. I just don't play it. No. I don't I don't know. I, I think if you if you make her a four six, um, uh, and I'm sorry, a, a four seven. Like if you hit three things at the minimum and make her at least a four seven, I think you're satisfied with her. No, you could do better. But you, but yes, I think it has to be like but four that, nine. But that's the thing that satisfied. has to her floor to make her playable has to be a four seven above rate. Yeah. Like what? How, do you need a full lane to make Wolf Bane, Wolf's Bane? A playable card, or can you get away with playing it on uh, on two other cards? Not in win. <laughs> in modern snap, honestly, playing Wolfsbane at all is like you're not winning. Right. So this is ironically like Wolfsbane, Wolfsbane. One of my guys, I, I say this tongue in cheek. One of my best cards on my season recap. <laughs> I don't remember. What my, oh yeah, mine was just like discard stuff. It was like Devil Dino was my one of my. It was like Blade and like Lady Sif, and I was like, I did hit infinite with that. (laughs) Yeah, it's all for me. It's always stuff that like was just a blip in testing and a really small sample size. Oh, you randomly played like three games with this, and you won a couple. Anyway, I think Sage is one of those like she just has to exist as one of like the possible abilities that could happen, but she's not going to be a build around card, and she's probably not going to be a generally good card. She's just going to be kind of niche. However. I will be using caches this week if this stands as the Living Tribunal Ink Pulp and the and Flaviano Legion. Legion. Oh my yep. god! They I go will hard. use all four token or caches. They go I don't hard care. Hard in the paint, These especially if those hands are like moving. Oh my goodness! Oh, if they're animated, I love it. Namora five five on reveal. Give plus five power to each of your cards alone at another location. Let's. So this feels like really a deck good. that wants to do like goblin stuff, like Ravona goblins. Sure. So like turn one something, turn two Ravona, then goblin goblin this, and then mm, profit. Is that good? I mean, it's basically it. It's like it's just you're so vulnerable to Shang, which is the number one control card in the game right now. But yeah, if you hit one card. You're a five ten. If you hit two cards, so you have solo laners well, then, and then a, a filled mid, you are at a five fifteen. Well, then you want to hit things. So I think hitting Ravona, like for in this example, you go turn one. 
I don't know, any one cost, right? Celine. Sure. Turn one Celine. That's your best one. Per, sure. Turn one Celine in the left lane. Turn yep. two Ravona in the mid lane. Turn yep. three, Goblin one of those lanes. Turn four, sure. other Goblin one of those lanes. Turn five, this in the yep. other lane. So you have one in each. Yep. The only one that's vulnerable to Shang-Chi is Namora. Because uh, she counts herself. Each of your cards. True. She could be a 520. Oh, lordy. <laughs> that's nuts. Uh, and then your Celine's soft to kill Monger, I guess. But... but she always is. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. Is it as long as you're hitting cards that are under the five power threshold, then you're but not even that vulnerable to Shane. A two eight and a five ten with a minus three, possibly minus six, or a minus eight, possibly minus eleven on the other side of the board in this idea, and then turn six, like just Eliath, and you're fine. Eliath, Doctor Doom, right? That is this the card the Celine Goblins deck needed. Oddly Probably. enough, is that isn't that weird? It used to be Ms. Marvel, but Ms. Marvel now needs so much extra teamwork that it doesn't fit in, and now Nomura picks up the slack, right? Right. Yeah, she goes pretty hard. I will say that line and what we're talking about is really soft to shitty locations. Yeah, you might want... Probably need to pack some location manipulation. Right. Because here's the thing, you could play Legion, fix something, and then play her on the final turn and buff these solo kids. And honestly, even if she only hits one card, um, that's not that big of a deal. She's still a 5'10", essentially. Yeah. So Legion going that's up good to a 5'12", for example, could be nice. Um because like they're not going to expect you to like they're they're not I'll put it this way they're not going to throw down like a Shang Chi into your Legion, right? So you don't have to worry about that for the most unless it's conquest and they saw you do it already, but that's a different thing, right? Yeah, if you're playing her on the final turn, they're probably not setting up expecting it. They're trying to play around your goblins and other junk, right? Yeah, and you can still just so like you just do this the goblins and just do your annihilus sentry stuff as well. Um, I think she's sneakily going to be one of our better cards. Yeah. Uh, she does feel a bit better than I first thought when I saw her uh, a few days ago or last week or whenever this was. Um, I'm interested. I'm actually really... I, she's the I mean, one or I'm most even intrigued if you, by. Even if you are putting down like Ms. Marvel early, right? Like Ms. Marvel is going to go to that nine power. You have one card on the left. You play Namora. Suddenly, everybody's buffed. Two cards not shangable, one card shangable. Then you play Doctor Doom, and you fill in all the bodies you needed to get the Ms. Marvel buffs on everybody. How do you think about her in Bounce? So you've bounced your cards back to hand. You play her on five to hit, like, Collector Bishop. Right. Um, and then you bring the card, the cheap cards back on six. Mm-hmm. My gut tells me I don't like it, but maybe you could convince me. Because <laughs> Chris uh, Bootman, who's like his favorite deck is Bounce. I, he tweeted something about like, oh, I can't wait to try this in Bounce. And I didn't really sit there and like let it digest until now. And I was just like, I could see it, but it makes my, it, it feels wrong in my gut. It feels like I kind of hey. want to throw up. But what's what's wrong about it? I played my, my one costs. I paid... I played my Bishop or my Collector on mid. Then I Beast on four. So I have Beast, Collector, nothing. I play Nomura, and then I play the Friends. I'm, I'm going to try it. Yeah. Okay. I, I like her more in the Goblins, but this is... I the, do too. But... The most intriguing card of the month. More so... No, we haven't hit all of them. This guy. We got... Sasquatch. 610 costs one less for each card you played last turn. Are you sure he wasn't tweeting about this card for bounce? Because this uh, is the no, bounce card. No, I'm, I'm, yeah, this is definitely the bounce card. Uh, now you just run them both, I guess. Nomura, Sasquatch, <laughs> bounce. Because uh, this this lets you actually get away with doing the turn five quote-unquote feels bad of Mysterio, Hitmonkey, then. Oh, it feels so good. 
Well, it feels bad because you didn't reach the max potential of Hit Monkey. Yeah, yeah, but but with this, but with this, with or this, that feels amazing. Sprinkled in there as well, it because makes that line feel way better. You've already got Call that's like wanting to play in bounce with all the one costs, He's and then if you got Sasquatch brought down, so if Sasquatch becomes a two ten and Cole's a four ten, you're hitting him with twenty power. These tall boys after and that's just that's like, even with and uh, that. You, you, <laughs> ooh, hear me out. Yep. You could be doing like Hood. Hood loves yeah. being a bounce, right? Yes. And Hope can be in this list. Of course. And you're playing the Mysterio. Right. You could, it's a lot of cards. You could play with Hope on board. If you have Hope down and you play Mysterio Hit Monkey, you have seven energy next turn, right? He costs yep. two. Um, Cole costs four. If you got down that demon at some point or one other card, uh, yeah. who costs one? Mockingbird. Imagine a turn where you go Sasquatch Coal Mockingbird. Yep. What? <laughs> Bounces back, baby. And that the crazy thing is you're following up on a high tempo turn five. Right. So it's not like you're super vulnerable to Eliath even. You're yeah. like, you played all your energy out on five. Normally you're gassed, and now you hit him with these. Now, of course, these cards being in your hand are going to make the earlier turns slower, but it's just going to be a matter of figuring out if it's worth it in the long run. I mean, run. you can go like Hood uh, into like a Demon. Uh, maybe you're doing like Kitty Bounce stuff. You can go like um, Bishop. Oh, and- yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that like, bounce anytime something is cluttering up your hand it's hard like they want to be very efficient and always be able to run they don't float (laughs) you got red hulk and you see a bounce list you're like i got a 611 okay because they'll use every ounce of energy they got so then sasquatch cannot be played early you know he can't be bounced early he's just an end game payoff how many of these end game payoffs can you fit this might not be a a a traditional bounce like beast falcon shell this could, could be, be monkey more drop. of like a hit monkey like Cheerio stuff with like, you know, your your zeros in like Jane Foster kind of thing. Um, yeah. Now I know it's a little weird because like Jane Foster, your zeros, y- you want to be able to play all your zeros on five. So, but you're probably writing hope. So there will be games where you just go something on hope, turn four, Jane, bunch of zeros, hit monkey, and then squatch. On six. Uh, that's actually it's really hard to do, but yes, is it? Because you have to have a free card to play at the same time as you play Hope, and to be able to go Jane on four. Oh, I mean, you're but in this deck, you'd be running Wasp and Yellow Jacket already. Yes. Yeah, Wasp and Yellow Jacket, and if you Beast on two, you can Hope plus the free card on on three. So you have ways, but it's yeah, maybe you don't do the Jane thing, the Jane Cheerios. You can still do like your your zeros though, I think. Yes, one hundred percent. Or maybe you just do magic in this list. That'd be interesting. The bounce deck that wants magic, but it really could. But I think I think the the, the floor is what we're talking talked about initially. That turn five, Mysterio hit monkey, and go have fun. Yeah, I mean, listen, like this guy with the energy discount, of course, is once again countered by. Mobius, the no, no fun police is in full force. You guys want to really consider if you don't have him, you definitely have to add him to your collection, and then you want to seriously consider about adding him to almost every deck Ooh, when we're looking at some Rihanna of these cards Gonzalez releasing. Ravona. Yes. yes. Um, but even if you just play two cards, I mean, he's a four ten. That's pretty playable. Yeah, Cole's playable. There you go. Uh, yeah. This month is or this week is a little weird. If it comes true, uh, you got a right. Havoc variant, Ravona variant, or just Havoc Ravona if you don't if you don't have them already. Uh, the month, the week before is Black Knight Scar, Tribunal Legion, uh, Kyra Selene. I think the best week for cards you don't own is, funnily enough, this Sage week, which With I think the worst new I, card. Yeah, I think that do not pull Sage, but get Tribunal Legion. Right, that's that's a new deck, and that's one of the best cards in the game. No, no, no. It's definitely Nomura. I mean, Black Knight, Scar. They don't go in the same deck anymore. Ooh, but Black Knight, Scar. If you don't have these guys, you should. No one cares about Scar anymore. 
Mm, still playable, un, though. Un, until they do the 610 change to Mockingbird, he's not seen much play at the moment. Black Knight is like a deck. He right is there. a deck. He has his own. His Nomura own seems like she could be a deck. So that's right. two good cards. Right. This is. I, I think every week is pretty solid. Um, I think Nocturne is the easiest skip I've ever seen on a card. There's so many other cards that like do I, her thing. Now, don't mistake me for saying she's bad, though. I think as this stat line and this ability, the Sage might be an she's easier. She's going skip, to but... be right. But We're getting a more Sasquatch. Uh, 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 let's think this way. Nocturne is probably going to be the sneaky best card this month because three five body can move once, like a Jeff, yep. like a Nightcrawler, and be able to have location disruption. That is a jack of all trades of a card in a three drop, and a lot of decks really want that generic three drop. That you know, you just play worse stuff typically i mean hope isn't worse but not every deck wants to leverage hope um so i think this could be the sneaky good card of the month but it's a weak week and it's a you know generically decent card whereas yeah. the sage week skipping her is a bit tougher because the week looks way better with legion and tribunal right. and she's very interesting. She's pixie. What? She's pixie. She's an gotcha. interesting card. She's a unique ability. That it is, is a brain teaser, I guess, if that's right. what you mean. Yeah. Well, people will be like the the build around potential of like you want different costs and nice even distribution. Of and costs. then I play her, and then they're gonna make me. Chat's gonna make me play like uh, the uh, Grandmaster to move her and double again. And it's like, no, guys, we're not winning games. We're winning lane. We're not winning games. Hey, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. You you set up the yeah. left lane, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then I'm gonna Taskmaster the Sage. Is no, this no, no, it? no, 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 no. It's better than that. <laughs> I'm gonna Zola to repeat the ability. <laughs> yeah. I got yeah. you in the middle lane because you move her with ta- yeah. with the Grandmaster, and then turn okay. six, you Zola, and it's going. <laughs> 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 I- we found our new combo deck. Let's go. Oh no, Chat's gonna make us do Liv- it. Living Backseat tribe, you gaming know, eat sage. your heart out. <laughs> I yeah. got I got Zola Sage, baby. <laughs> Zola, Venom, they're both centered. They all all of those her. cards, all those cards synergize with Renslayer. Oh my goodness! Oh, they do. <laughs> you could Grandmaster Zola on the same turn, baby. Oh, that's disgusting. It actually kind of is. Okay, Sage is on. still going to be pretty bad. But... Yeah. No more is going to be good though. Yeah, I think Sasquatch cool. is going to be good, and the best card to get this season is Zemo. Yes, as he becomes a series five. If you didn't already have him, yeah. So yeah, is he? Do you think that like Zemo becoming S five for the free to play guys is what you spend tokens on? I think so. Think as it's... much as I love Nomura. I think Zemo is kind of edging all these guys out. Now, Blink looks really good, but Blink's is another Battle Pass card. Right. Um, it just feels so weird to say that the Battle Pass from last month is like better than everything else twice in a row, but it is. Can I... If Zemo is still a 3-5, 100%. If they've nerfed him, then maybe it's a consideration. But Zemo at 3-5 is like just get him. So... Let me go backtrack a little bit. So if I okay, look we're backtracking. Really, really quick. We got to wrap up too, Brad. We I can't know, backtrack know, too far. We, we got to wrap up, but I got to look at something really quick. Okay. okay. What are we looking date? at? Release so, dates. There's how many in each row? Seven. A lot. So seven, um, five. That's 12 cards. Yep. Since our last. So this came out in January, Meek, right? Uh, you're trying to figure out when a S4 will drop. There won't be one. <laughs> That's what I'm complaining about. We yeah. haven't had a Series 4 card since January. In me. Unless they surprise us and one of these slew of 11 cards we just covered is a S4. Right. And this, the last 12 cards have all been Series 5. And according yep. to the data mines, these are, all this, this is 6 Series 5 cards and 5 Series 5 cards. Yeah. 
I'm not I'm not super excited about that. <laughs> Plenty of these cards feel like series four cards. That's what yeah, really like, hurts. I honestly this entire month of May feels like series four month. Every yeah, maybe Namora could be S five uh, and I, Blink could be S five. I feel like Sasquatch. But I'm putting Nocturne, like Sage, and Sasquatch are all S fours. See, I think of her as an S four, and I think of him as an S five. Okay. Well, at least we can agree. Nocturne and Sage are a hundred percent. Absolutely, S4 cards. these are. This is like, please, yeah. two in a row. Frankly, can we just get a month where they're like, hey, guess what, everybody? They're all S three. Exactly. Give it to me. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know how like how much confidence, like consumer confidence, you would garner if you, know you how did many once a once a year? Like, yeah. Just have a month that's here's all series three cards. Yep. How many people that had been playing the game and then kind of fell away would, might would come back for hey I can grab all these new cards? Right. And I don't think it would cost them anything. I really people don't. Still going to buy the battle pass. Whale's right. going to whale. Or better yet. What if you just put them all in the battle pass? Like you off rip, you get uh, blank. There you go. Off rip, you get like, blank, and then like yeah. level ten, you get nocturne. Level twenty, you yeah. get sage, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The free to play players would have a fit, but it would be a way to sell all the right. battle pass. Free to play players, I think you can find the ten dollars for once for five new cards. Yeah. As opposed to their current threshold of like fifty to a hundred for a card, that'd be amazing. It would be amazing, but all right, that's the episode. Yep. Teddy, do you have any? F- Back, Teddy. Do you have any final thoughts on this, this episode? Yeah, we love you guys. The uh, these releases are going to be wild, especially six in one season. Oh my goodness. I'm really looking forward to a bunch of the stuff coming out. We're going to be testing them on stream and be can't wait to see your theory crafting as well because the community always picks up on stuff that I've missed when I'm looking at these. Yeah, I mean, the, the, both months look great. Next month looks really good. Month after looks very interesting. Um, not very powerful. I think next month looks powerful. The month after looks middling for the most part, but very interesting designs. Yeah. Uh I it's weird. I'm every it feels like When are we getting Firestarter by the way? Never. It broke something inherent so they're going to have to rework it, I think. That in Sasquatch uh, would be insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I wanted that card. I'd fully theory crafted what I was doing. Yeah. But I don't think we're ever getting it. <laughs> so sad. All right. Well, we love you. Guys, go on patreon.com slash can't stop snap if you want to see more early stuff, bonus episodes, Thanos, Loki, a new one to be recorded soon. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Live recordings you can access like this right now uh, with other people. And uh, you're amazing. We love you. Join it for free, by the way. We are going to be doing something. One last announcement. We are going to be doing something. I don't know when. I'll have to work with Teddy. We'll have to figure out an episode in which we want to make it work. Yep. I would like to soon have an episode where because i can choose where what posts are seen on patreon through like what tiers and stuff yeah i'd like to do a um live episode that's open to all patrons paid or free yeah that'd be great just to be like hey this is a benefit come hang out come see a live episode um through the patreon and uh well, like I said, we'll figure out what that episode entails and like which one we're going to do it for. But it should be soon. I, I would say within the next three episodes, we'll get that done. I'm in. Count me in. All right. Bye, everybody. We'll see you see next ya. week. Can't Stop Snapping is a podcast hosted and produced by Brad Saffer and Teddy Ninja, originally created by Michael Thurman.